Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to this, let's just say, League of Legends discussion. And today I wanted to discuss about Evil Geniuses and a victory, or the LCS victory to that matter. And it's not, big, and it's, I think it's not the, the victory that really surprises me. I think the 12 and 1 during the, uh, the lower bracket stage and just dominated almost every team. It's just, it's the how they do it and the, the players they already have for this team. And I wanted to just, you know, discuss about the players that they have. I mean, and how will this, you know, impact League of Legends in North America as a whole rather than just, you know, Oh, you know, this is this is going to be like a big game changer. Now, I'm not going to say that what I'm going to discuss is going to change so many teams' minds. If anybody from Team Liquid or 100 Thieves or any other re other teams from that thing is go is is really don't want to involve in this thing, that's fine. I don't want to mince words or anything. I'm just going to say that. What Evil Geniuses have done this season and throughout the playoffs has showcased that you can do this. You just need to take a chance. I think I heard it from, I saw one of the Twitter posts, of course. I'm go I think I'm going to show you. I think I, I, think I, heard, I think I saw a Twitter post. I'm, I'm going to show you. Um, I already saw one of the Twitter posts. I heard from Riff Reaction when Emily ran and Trevor heard I... Heard a lot of I I kind of heard a lot of things, and I think I think I, I think I'm kind of fascinated of you know players taking chances of rookies and how to execute them and surround them with better talent. So, um, this is. Um, okay, wait. Just give me a few minutes. Oh, okay. Okay, give me a give me a few minutes. Okay, while okay while we're okay while we're showing you that um, if anybody likes. If anybody loves this discussion and wanted to see more, I want you to subscribe to the video, like the video, follow me on some of those socials, and I'll be fine. Okay. Okay. Okay, so this is was the trend. This is from Andrew Barton, who's the general manager of the Evil Thieves. He is the um the general manager for the Evil G Genius Genius mm -hmm. team. The whole team that won the whole thing. And I'm going to read a thread to you. Um, so it says, The whole discussion on NA talent is interesting to me, but a few points I would like to highlight. While there is talent here in NA, our player population is smaller than that of, uh, of other major regions. This highlights the importance of scouting and player selection that both Peter Dan, who is the coach of e Peter Dunn, who is the head coach of EEG, and um, Empire, who is the head of scouting of Evil Geniuses, and with the and his academy and prodigies have led throughout their ten years at EG. So it's Peter Dan and Empire who's in charge of the selection and scouting of the players from the academy and the prodigies and from and the prodigies onward. Um, I believe heavily in placing the right players around inexperienced rookies. When Danny was called up last year, he had one job. We didn't need Danny to be vocal and make calls in the game. We needed him to team fight to the best of his abilities. Look back at his EGP. Oh, his Evil Geniuses Prodigy. Um, I actually, I actually, I will actually, um, I will look at these stats. Um, so for those who don't know, I think he Danny came in at around twenty twenty one. So. In order for me to look at, I will have to research um, LCS, um, LCS like proving grounds. 
let's see. Um, I think it's what's 2020 LCS Proving Grounds. So I had to go season 10. And LC, let's see, LCS Proving Grounds. LCS Proving Grounds. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? In a spring? No. Oof. Yeesh. Oh, okay, NA Academy Playoffs. Let's just go Academy Playoffs. All right. Okay. Um. So I think there. So. Oof. Yeah, this is gonna be really hard. I mean, <laughs> sorry about that. This is gonna be really hard to to find. Okay, uh, I need to go to another website. I need to go to another website. Okay, you know what? I just just type the player's name. Just type the player's name. There you go. I right, just type the player's name in there, and voila! Oh, he wasn't showing up until season eleven. Oh God. Okay, so um, he was playing for the Evil Genius's Prodigy. He was playing for Evil Genius's Prodigy, and um. Yeah, he was playing the Evil Genius's Prodigy. Okay, Proving Grounds. Evil Genius's Prodigy. He was playing from the 4th of April to the 18th of April. And he has like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 wins. 7, 4 and 7. 4 and 7. His stats were probably not the best. I think his best stat, stat is Samira, but I think Samira's probably like, you know, um, OP and probably the different patch. But he was playing Kaiser. He was playing a lot of Kaiser. He was playing Israel a bit. He was playing Samira, and then he was playing Jinx twice. So the potential was—I mean, the potential was there. We never know how good he was. I mean, the, I mean, the, the potential was there for him, but I don't think he was as great as he is. The fact that he was 17 years old playing in the academy with some other players, so. I look at these. I look at these stats and I look at these numbers, and I was like, "He's not bad. He's just not as effective enough." I think um, we can just we can just look at one of his games, his victories. Um, he, I think his I think his jinx is two two five with three hundred twenty seven CS, and the gold distribution is got like twenty three point six overall, feeding a Danny. Danny. Uh, twenty point three. So he wasn't like the best player at that time. The you know the most well played player at that time. He was like the oh my god, he is going to be so much incredible kind of time, you know. And I think that's the thing with most North American people is that they look at this and feel like this guy is great, but but is he going to be good for our team? Is he going to be good for our team into the future? He will he be good enough to pull off incredible clutch plays, and will he be will he be like incredible? I think I think the proof was there. It's just that you know sometimes most teams don't don't have the gallbladder to just pick up some talent and just 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 watch them grow before their eyes. Um, I think I think the I think the one game that really like absolutely really like. Blow me away was the Tristana game against Andre Dees. 13 and 3, 13 3 4 with incredible, incredible stats. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna watch it again. So he got 13 kills. Um, it was a 37 minute game, 13 kills, 393 CS. I mean, he was well ahead of the whole RG of the whole, um, F, um, 100 Ds players. Well overhead. Almost 40 CS. I mean, he's got IE. He's got GA. He's got Kraken Slayer. He's got Death Defiance. Wow. He was amazing. And, and here is the gold distribution. Um, look at these gold distribution. 31.7%. 31.7%. They were feeding this guy. They were playing the Uzi kind of game. You know, let's feed him all the gold. Let's just... Give him bot turn, give him top turn. He was feeding all those kind of things. Um, and the and he was like more damaged by anybody else. Forty three point 
one person with a 1055 damage per minute. Damage 1055 damage per minute. I mean, the closest we have is 27% with 662. T was well ahead of 100 T's in 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 in, in damage per minute and and damage distribution to be honest. And I think one play in particular was was incredible. It was one of the most incredible plays in all of the LCS. And it just and it kind of put Danny on the map. And I will get to the statistical major of how great was was Danny th that season. That year is 2017. But um, I think like this play in particular is what got me to like Danny even more. Hey, here is the knockup, but only on a who he is. That a good enough fight? Oh, he's almost deleted. Nearly down. Pops the shield. GPO buys a lot of space, and that means EG gonna walk back. Rocket jump buys a bit of space, but still has to burn the stopwatch. Good barrel damage. The front line might die. It's EG forced to run. No, a damage done to Abadaga. Nearly kills him off. Contract's gonna be low. Gonna be dropped. One for nothing. Push back now. No one's left alive. They've got to run. I mean, just look at this. He, he was like 3v5. I mean, it's 3v5. Um, This was 3v5. Gold advantage is way, way in favor of uh, 100 teams. 8k gold lead. I mean, I see like 18 good gold leads taken and they won. Um, it was one nexus, one tower left, two, three open nexus. It, I mean, they have three out of four dragon souls, 10 seconds until mountain soul, and then a baron open up. This was 100 teams game to lose. I mean, this was literally 100 games, 100 teams game to lose. And then I was thinking to myself, there was no way a 17-year-old kid who was playing on Prodigies, who doesn't have the most incredible statistics from his academy team, and then, of course, they bring it in him, and everybody was looking at him and saying, I'm not sure if he's good enough to succeed. And then Danny pops off a... Run. They've got to run. No, Danny steps up, and Danny shuts down one. Mid laner is dead, though, and oh. it's going to be another oh. kill in. Danny is doing Danny. it all. Danny shuts down FBI. The rookie of the year puts his team... And yes, he was rookie of the year, mind you. For this reason. On his back. Can only watch him knock down. Now, this was not a pentakill, by the way. This was not a pentakill, by the way. But it just shows you how incredible he is. The wave as they can't push the base without minions. And Danny single-handedly keeps EG in the upper bracket. It's Danny versus the world. It's Danny versus the 100 Thieves. And Danny Danny's going to get one. Danny could get two. Holy God, he's so damn good at this game. Damn, Danny, he does it again. And they won the game. The Tristana! The, game the undefeated that. Tristana! He wants that! They won the game based on that. So it was incredible. It was what I, I, I did watch the play, but I never realized how good this kid can be. I mean, that was like, tw that was like, I, I, I didn't know it was 2017 photo, but, but I never realized how good this kid can be. Now, he was Rookie of the Year, mind you. Um, Let's see. Let's see. And I think 100 Thieves went on to win the whole... I think 100 Thieves went on to win that game. I think 100 Thieves won that game. 100 Thieves won that series. 100, I think 100 Thieves won that series. Yeah, they won that series. But 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 that doesn't take away from what Daddy did in that game four that makes everybody just look up and say, oh my god, this kid is amazing. This kid is amazing. So, um... So, I think that summer... So, okay, I think that summer... Um, so that summer statistically, he have a he have a fifty nine percent win rate, four point one KDA, nine point two CS per minute, with a s almost sixty percent kill participation. Tr his best game was Tristana with ten wins, with ten with a nine point five KDA. Like, God, that is amazing. Now, now, in terms of you know statistics. In terms of like statistics, among other, I mean, other players or other players, I'm gonna go to the stats and say and compare his his LCS summer with like the rest. Um, let's see, 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 let's see. Okay, summer 2021, great. So remember, he was a rookie of the split, mind you. Um. So this is the rank. So these are the rankings. Oh, okay. Uh, long stat. Long stat. Okay, player stats. Great. Player stats. Great. Wonderful. We. This is where to get the ball rolling. Um. This is where to get the ball rolling. 
Okay. So in okay, but okay. So these are the statistics. You got Aframu who was playing in one time for 80 carries. You got Dreams, FBI, who need let's just go with the more with let's go with the player that plays 80 carry for the sake of 80 carries. In terms of KDA, in ter now let's not look at these like one stats or right. remember these are like um 80 carries. These are just like support play in 80 carry because of course, you know, they wanted to play, they they already clicked the playoffs, they wanted to play differently, so they oh, let's just let's just go. So in terms of this, um you got Sven, who's really good, a King who's also good, and then Danny was let's just call it Danny is like the top top five, top five in KDAs. Not bad. CS per minute. Top two behind De behind Sven. Um, gold per minute. He's top. Kill participation. He's probably like top 10-ish. Damage per minute. Um, top five or something. So Danny was really, really good. He was really, really good. He was a really, really good player on that team. He was a rookie. Mind you, and he and he can and he can show you what he's capable of, and he can pop off and showcase what he's capable of, and be exceptional in his role. And I said that was incredible. The stats back him up, and I feel like you know the sky's the limit for him. The other conversation from Andrew Barnett is, uh, um, JoJo's a unique player. This is a player who I truly believe can be one of the best in the world. What? We're playing a role that is more reliant on decision making and controlling the flow of the game. We need to be we needed to be sure that he has players around him that can accelerate his growth. Um Jojo is Jojo Pion, who who they bought in next season to come to accommodate the 18-year-old 80 carry. And the thing about um ooh, the thing about um mid laners is that it's a really, 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 really um Really, really hard tournament to play. I think um, one of the casters, Raya's, have a little bit of statistic. Um, let's see. Um, he's have a little statistics. Let's see. Uh, no. Yeah, I was. I need to find. I need to find it. Okay. I don't know who his name is. I know who his name is. Um. Um. Okay. Just give me a minute. But, but, there is a little statistic. Okay. There is a little statistic that is. I mean, there is a little statistic that is that um. You know, there was a there was a little statistic from his tweet. I think. I think this this I think this this puts this this season puts a like an historical context. I mean, this is probably like the more, I think this is this season has a more historical context. Oh, um, yeah, I know it. R A A F A. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, jeez. Uh -huh. Okay, this is good. Okay, there we go. Mark. Okay, there we go. Um, um, give this a follow. In fact, if I give some of the players a follow. Okay, so this is so this is how, this how, this is how historic this is. Um, Jojo Pion is the first NA domestic man to win an LCS finals in his first split since 2013 NA C9 Har. Let's just remind you, 2013. And it's the first NA mid domestic NA to win from 2018 Paul Belter. 2013 and 2018. You, you know how significant those years were for that time? 2013. That is the first ever split. Give me one minute. Sorry about that. Um, dinner. Um, that is the very first split that was made in the LCS. It took us like 
10 years for someone who just came into the league and produced something incredible. Now, I, I think it's that I think when we look at JoJo Pin's stats for this season, it's not the most, you know, pretty in terms of statistics. 18 KDA, 5th in average kills, 7th in average assists, 7th in CS per minute, 8th in goal per minute, 11th in kill participation, 9th in damage per minute, damage. But he's also um, eighth in damage per minute, ninth in damage percentage. So not great stats, of course. But you know he's a first play. He's a young guy, a rookie in a rookie. He's he's a rookie mid laner. So you gotta give him and it, and it's a really hard role. You know mid laner is really really hard role, especially for a rookie kid in there. So the all the statistics he's really good at is first in goal difference, second in CS difference for fifteen. Third in XP, first and first blood participation, and third in solo kills, which is which is a really good stat. So he he, I mean, the damage, the average kills, the KDA. He's I don't think he's not that good. He's not you know Bjergsen and 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 Perks, you know Perks from last year, and Fudge, of course, Fudge was in that team. Nor Abadage, of course. So he's not that much of a good player, but he could. But his potential was incredible. He, I mean, I saw the Diana. I saw like. His Yasuo, Diana, his Yasuo pick, and he was incredible picking off like one by one. That that showcased like the trust you can you can bring you can bring to a young player. And he was and he was pretty good. He was pretty pretty good to to be honest. So I feel like you know they have the team to 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 just win it all. They have a eight a seven an eighteen year old player. Who can you know pop off at any minute? Who can who who could be incredible? And you have a seventeen year old who used to play Fortnite, mind you, um, who can play exceptionally well. He's young, but he's also great. But of course, you know, when you have a rookie, when you have two good rookies, you need some young know, some voices in your team. You need some veteran help. You need some players who knows the thing, who 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 knows the situation, but can help these players develop and succeed. And that's where Impact, Inspired, and Vulcan comes into the fray. And I feel like these players were, were exceptional as well. I feel like they can be um, wonderful and vocalized. You know, the veteran NC, the veterans for this team can help out the youngsters becoming themselves. And it was incredible to see, especially Impact and that Mordekaiser game. I mean, golly, that Mordekaiser, that Impact Mordekaiser, man, that was, that was, that was, that was wild. Um, so yeah, um, you got those players, and you got those two young players, and in the very first game of the season, Danny, the person that I mentioned you about, was insane in that 100 Thieves game, the same way he was insane against TSM. Now, let me just remember, TSM was, was in a really bad, bad, bad mess. He, they were hot dog crap. Their, their, their two best players are now gone. They were in a situation there were like internal issues. We're not gonna get to the TSM part. I think TSM is just Dan on arrival. To all my TSM fans, I'm sorry. But um Danny was was holy crap. First game mind. K you. right now. Yep, TSM, they want to flip it right here, but EG, they're trying to poke down and heal back up with their Ocean Soul. Impact, though, gets engaged on, he's got it! Gets jumped, the stun is on, they're going to find him, he's going to zone him for a second, Shady's going to drop, one for zero, stop for Poppy for a second, and the front line goes inspired, and that means they're going to get the kill. Down goes Kaiduo, and that means the Danny. fight is over, a quadra kill for Danny! Welcome to the LCS, Zeri Danny gets another pentakill! 100% of Zeri games have resulted in pentas for Danny. And that's a pentakill, mind you. That's a pentakill. That's a clear pentakill. So, that was on Zeri, mind you, which is a new champion that was brought into the new League of Legends. And he got a pentakill. Now, yeah, everybody's thinking, oh, but that champ is broken. That's expected. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that champ was broken. But it's how you play that champion that is, that is amazing. And he played that Zeri pretty well. Um, he, Let me just... Let me let me look at my stat. Let me look at that. Let me look at the statistic from that one. Okay. Um. So spring. So spring. Okay. Um. LCS. Where is it? Okay. There it is. Okay. So. 
Yeah, LCS Summer. Yeah, L. Oh, wrong match. Oh. <laughs> I look at the LCL. Sorry, silly me. Okay. I, I, wait, I want to discuss the lock-in tournament. Yeah, I think the lock-in tournament is pretty much important because even though the tournament doesn't matter too much, at least you can say that the lock-in tournament was kind of cool. So, yeah, the lock-in tournament... So, the lock-in tournament was made, and I think Evil Genius is finishing second behind Team Liquid. So, I mean, it, it, I know it's not much of a huge deal, but for 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 the players, it was... It was it was a really big deal for them. So so right, Danny highest KDA, second in average kills, probably second in average kills, first in average deaths, second in CS per minute, second in gold per minute, probably top five in damage. Um, damage per minute, he's third. Yep, third. And um, goal difference, he's fourth. CS different for a minute, he's fourth. So Danny was a first blood. He got like below that, and no pentakills. But you know, yes. So Danny was really, really good at that time. Danny was really good. I think Evil Geniuses did well in that lock in tournament that makes you feel like. They're there, and of course you got Jojo Peon, who's second be second in KDA by a long shot against Bjorkson. I mean, when you I mean to go second place behind one of the greatest mid laners NA has ever witnessed, it's not bad. It's that that's not a bad that's not a bad statistic, man. That that's something you can just hold up. Um, second in average kills behind Bud Fudge, who was transitioning from top to mid lane. Um, second behind average assist. Fourth in CS per minute, top in gold per minute, kill participation E is fourth, and damage percentage, not that much, damage per minute, he is fifth, CS per minute, top, goal difference per minute, 15, top, XP per minute, top, first blood, first blood, third, and soul. Solo kills, third, second, second behind Bjorkson with three, Bjorkson at four. So the two the two players did not do bad. The two players did not do bad in the lock in tournament, and every EV geniuses fan is gonna go like, oh yeah, they're, they're really really good. If we can do well in the summer split, if we can do well in the the the, the spring split, sorry, the spring split. Maybe, just maybe, this team will have a chance to finally win it all. Not saying they're going to win, but maybe they have a chance. Because you look at that season and it just feels like Team Liquid, 100 Thieves, Cloud9 with their Korean and their fun, wacky coach LS for a while. Um, I feel like Evil Geniuses, they finished fourth with a 99 record. I feel like it's not bad, but it's not great either. So there were a lot of growing pains, you know, you know. Rookies coming in, you got some veteran seeds, there were some few games they won, but, you know, a couple of games that kind of slipped up. Um, so let me just look at the st stats of the spring split. Oh, and I got the personal, st oh, you know what, I got the personal stats right here. So Danny, so I already mentioned Jojo Peon stats. Danny's stats in the LCS is, wow, um, 15 KDAs, first in average kills, CS per minute, goal per minute. Damage percentage, second in damage per minute, third in goal difference at 18 minutes, second in CS damage per CS D at second, first in XP per 15 minutes, and at one pentakill on Zeri. And by God, I mean Danny was incredible. I mean, now Danny was not the MVP. He it was Summit, and I and I was looking at and I think Summit was. I think I look at Summit, and I feel like Summit was really really good for that team. So I think. I look at Summit, KDA, um, 15 KDAs, first in average kills, fourth in average depths, and this is, I mean, first in gold per minute, second in kill participation, I think, I think he's at the most solo kills, yeah, 14, wow, four more behind impact, 
So, wow, he, Summit was incredible, and I think he was MVP. But I feel like this Evil Geniuses team is not bad. I'm not sure they can just compete with the other good teams within themselves. And then came the playoffs. I mean, and then they lost to FlyQuest, and then for only game they dropped, and then they gone 3-0. Cloud Nine, yeah, the three O Cloud Nine, the three O Cloud Nine, and then it was Game One of the of the series against Hundred, no Team Liquid. It was against Team Liquid. This Team Liquid team was stacked. You got Whipple at the top, um, Santorin in the jungle, Bjorkson in the middle, Hansama and Core JJ. I mean, they were like. This was the equivalent of the Vitality Super Team in Europe. But this North American team, even though the Kata like fumbled it against 100 Thieves with that backdoor, with that Abadage backdoor finish against TF, I mean, and the reverse sweep, I mean, jeez, that has to feel like a feel like a mental destruction for this team, for for that team liquid squad. I mean, that's I mean, the the way they lost was bad, but the way they lost and then backdoor against that, it was it was devastated. So yeah, I think hundred T. I think I think everybody in like team liquid, everybody was talking that team liquid would beat down this EG team. I was going into that game. I mean, I remember that I remember that series well. It was it was rainy, and it was rainy at that time. I was watching a few playoff games. Um, that was a Saturday, mind you. So I was watching this, and I was watching this like kind of live, and I was kind of live and recording in that one. And the game was kind of like back and forth at that time, you know. It was a back and forth kind of game. Daddy got first blooded, and then of course it was a back and forth game. And then, and then the Baron play, the Baron play, man. Um, before that, um. This was not the first. Oh wait. Oh sorry. I, I forgot to mention about the EGC9 game. Yeah, the EGC9 game, they were they swept them 3-0. That was when Danny got his second pentakill. So I forgot about that. Sorry about that. To experience an LCS finals. They're marching their way straight towards one though, and Summit wants to stop them. Yeah, oh, he went all the way over, Danny! Actually managed to flash that wall, and Summit's completely out of position as a result. Impact's getting shredded, but they just don't have the damage. The Chompers, I think, are gonna save C9, but Danny oh. is going off! Zeri is disgusting! As Danny is gonna find two, make it three! The man has the Penta oh, in his eye! Another Penta! Go for it! Go for it! Danny Penta! It seems to happen all the time! Jojo, you absolute yeah. jerk! There we go! No, what's going on? Where's Danny? He doesn't care! He does his waiting! Danny's gonna give him to him! That's the best to kill! That's a play sure from Planet Z. Well played, Z. Well played. I was thinking, oh my god, Jojo Pian will be an absolute jerk. No, this player will be an absolute jerk if they give him the penta- if they'll give him a- Number two! Danny, the penta kill machine! Alright, this one was given to him! Good for him. They, they gave him the pentakill. Good for them. So yeah, that was against Cloud9. Um, they beat them 3-0. And it was probably like a big win for them. It was probably like a big win for Evil Genesis. And that crowd you just hear, that was like 500 people. Imagine trying to pull it. Imagine pulling off the most incredible play with about 10,000 people at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. This was the first ever um stadium tournament played since the pandemic, since after like 2019, and then of course the pandemic and all those kind of things that happened. So for me to witness that play live with a crowd like this in an atmosphere like this against a team like Team Liquid, it was. It was unbelievable. I rewatched this play like a thousand, like 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 fifty times, man. I rewatched this play like 50, 50 times, and I cannot believe I'm saying this, but I'm gonna watch it again. I'm gonna watch it, man, I, and you're gonna watch it as well. EG, Danny's on his way. There's so many low health members, but Team Liquid. What's the time for Danny? Two v five is. I mean, look. Okay, so so yeah, let's just end up, okay. So yeah, I think there was a mistake on Centaurin. I think he was trying to smite it. So at the 20, I think there's some people tell me at the 29 minute mark from the comments, at the 29 minute mark, the Baron will get like, a, the Baron will regen like a thousand health per minute. So about three minutes later, they were chomping on the Baron and Centaurin, it wasn't Centaurin spotted badly, it was Centaurin spotted too late. And that 
kind of cascaded into, let's just say, images taken before tragedy. You could say that. Uh, but, um, yeah, um, I don't think Centaur made a bad mistake. I was just like, he did not realize that the Baron was regenerated like that. But you cannot take away from what this play... You cannot take away from how incredible this play has to be. And I was... And I was like... Unbel I was like... Wow. That, that play was awesome. So, um... Yeah, let's just rewatch the play. Let's just... Watch this one again. Danny's on his way. There's so many low health members, but... Team Liquid Wants to buy time for Danny. He's gonna get here. 2v5 is possible. I mean, you're not gonna stop the Baron, but you they might get a fight. team fight. He's gonna shoot! What? You're kidding me! Centauri fights early! I mean, they were showing a picture of him in a beach, smiling in his face uh, during the pregame show. It was amazing. <laughs> and that was a tweet like, that guy just stole, he stole a penta and get a penta kill. I mean, he, just, he, he stole a, he uses Jinx, and Jinx was really OP in that patch. And in the meta, of course. He stole the Baron with Jinx, got excited, which is good, which means like, if she's get, if you get a kill on towers or monsters or anything, she got excited. So, Stole the Baron, got five kills out of it, and it was like the most incredible thing ever. I mean, Azil, Kobe, Freak were losing their minds, the fans were losing their minds, and Team Liquid, Cloud9 fans, every single one was cheering for Danny. And it was it, it was incredible. Like a young kid, a young North American kid, you know, an 18-year-old North American kid pulling off that play in that atmosphere with that much fans. It was incredible. It was probably the most incredible play I've ever witnessed, and the most incredible play that I've witnessed in my time of watching LCS. Now, and the, you know the weirdest thing about it? I never watch LCS that much. I always watch LEC sometimes. I watch LEC sometimes because I feel like the LEC was was not only good because of the um the teams that they have, but also the casters I like. I like Medic. I like I like Medic. I like Vedios. I like Dracos. I like Kedro. Laurie, Shocks, those kind of guys, I like them. And I and Quick Shot, of course. Shout out to Quick Shot. Um, I like these people. And I kinda like, of course, the LEC history more because I kind of believe that the LEC has a better chance of winning something internationally than probably NA can. And I'm from an NA region. I'm like almost to North America. I'm closer to North America than I am in Europe. So yeah, to see that happening live, a guy who doesn't care much about the LCS to see this happening live. It was amazing. It was the most amazing play I ever witnessed. And it comes at a critical and it, it comes at the most incredible time when many people thinking that NA in NA North America is North America pl personnel will not choose NA will choose like foreign players like the Jazukes and the and the Breckles of the world over homegrown talent, even Emily Rand kind of, like, swear off on, on her, on after the game, like, I do not already hear about an effing excuse about him <laughs> picking mid laners. <laughs> I mean, I cannot believe she just said that, <laughs> but, man, it was, like, all those years of frustration, all those years of, like, I cannot believe they chose this over that, it was, like, finally, someone listened, and someone actually had the balls to actually pull this off and to actually believe in the talent and sh and showcase that talent always triumphs over cash money and and payments and how much dollars you have it's it's if you can believe in the talent if you can if you can put the talent around them and put them with veteran players on their team you can achieve so much you can achieve what Danny and Jojo Pin has done Danny in the playoffs was 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 something else um First in KDAs, first in average kills, first in assists, second in CS, first in goal per minute, first in kill participation, third in damage, first in damage per minute, second in XP per, per 15, and two pentakills. Zven has six pentakills in the LCS in his career. Danny has three in, its, in, in one season alone. 
Let's just remember, Sven has played the LCS for about three or four years. Danny has only played for two years, and he's got three pentakills. Well, four if you call the Tristana pentakill. But the point remains, Danny is amazing. And I never thought I'm going to say this, but I'm glad that Evil Genius has won that tournament. By the way, Evil Genius, that game was a semifinal matchup. They had to face 100 Thieves, and I kind of feel like 100 Thieves kind of throw the ball. And Evil Genius just beat them in the, probably the fastest LCS finals ever. Like, like over an hour. Like, it was it was mind-boggling. To, to be the defending champions like that, to beat them like that, I mean, it was Impact Mordekaiser, it was Aspire, Steel and Baron, and... Barrett and Elder Drake. I mean, yeah, the, the team kind of fumbled a bit with their early game things, early games, you know, they, that's something they had to clean up in MSI. But uh, I'm kind of glad that Evil Genius is one, not to stick it to all the teams that buy in imports and just saying, ha, this is what happens when import, then this is what happens when you believe in any talent. We prove to you that any talent. Can be that imports. No, no, no. This is not. A, no, no. This look. This video is not a anti-import video. Like a like a. Oh, let's just not buy any imports. No, no, no. This is this is just what what building a team looks like. And in the case of Jojo Peon, um, his playoff stats is kind of improved. Third in KDA. Third in assists. Is average kills. First in average assists. Second in goal per minute. Fifth in KP. Kill participation, sixth in damage per minute invasion, fifth in damage per mission, third in goal difference in 50 minutes, second in CS and XP, fourth in first blood, and second in solo kills. And for Jojo Peon and and for Jojo Peon and for Danny, for Jojo Peon, he has to face these kind of players. Ole, Hansama, Bjorkson, Berserker, who's a really good FBI, Johnson, Lost, really solid players in the in the LCS, and then for Jojo Peon, he has to face, um, he has to face Fudge, a Blaze Olive, Tukulu, who was really good in that FlyQuest team. That Tukulu guy was really good on FlyQuest team, and Abadage, and then of course Bjergsen. So, I mean, Jojo Peon had to, Jojo Peon had to face these kind of players. I mean, these players were not bad, and he won. Like it's amazing that you know. Yeah, sure, Jojo Pin put it up with veteran talent, but it's amazing that you could you have to combine NA talent with veteran players, and then you can succeed. You, I mean, if you can do that, if some teams would do that, you can't succeed. Now, I'm not saying, like, you know, let's abandon, abandon all the Koreans and the Turkish and even the Brazilians, and just saying, let's just put, let's just, Go North America. No, I'm not saying to go narrow-minded. I'm just saying that, it, as Jack said it in his post game, in two years we could see a different um, atmosphere in LCS to the one that we are seeing now. And I feel like Jojo Pian and Danny are the future for LCS, the future faces of the LCS. I mean, Jojo Pian's interview was kind of incredible when he was asked about the group stage with him and G2. He was saying he's gonna crap on EU. He did. He said the S word, but he. I'm just gonna translate to all my PG-13 guys. Um, he said he's gonna crap on you, and the confidence, the confidence to back it up, the 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 confidence to back it up, the the aura, the ego he has to back it, and and then the the ego, of course, to prove it, and then to back it up, and he even said about you know how do you feel about facing Faker, and he doesn't want to discuss about Faker, which is good is good. You know, Jensen learned his lesson a couple of years ago when trying to talk about Faker, and he got clapped, so good on him to not mm -mm, not poke the bear or the Demon King, of course. So to see some, so to see probably an exciting, a, a pretty good bot laner, and an amazing bot laner who can pop off at any minute, and an, an exciting, exciting player who can not only talk the talk, but walk the walk, it's, it's amazing. I, um, I, I'm going to continue with the Twitter thread by Andrew. Um, Impact, Inspire, and Vulcan knew these were skilled players, but I asked more out of them, especially when it came towards building up JoJo to the player I believe he can be. While Danny and JoJo should be receiving praise, I look at Impact, Inspire, and Vulcan for being the true rock stars for this team. They execute on what we ask of them as experienced players. 
This is a big part as to why EGS succeed. An endless amount of work goes into how and we are constructed. The roster the way it is. I'm confident that our staff here puts in more work than any team in the league when it comes to designing the roster and making decisions. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not just like... Like the coaches that make it work. It's the coaching, the scouting, the play, the the hierarchy, the 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 hierarchy, the persons who put this team together, and ask these veteran players to make these rookies feel special. And that is so so wonderful. I think this is probably the first LCS team that I'm kind of rooting for. Like my like I never had a favorite in the LCS that before, but now I'm feeling like. With the players that they have, with the confidence and the way Danny... I mean, I feel like right now, Danny is my favorite LCS player of all time Of right now. I mean, by God, he is amazing. I'm going to say that Danny is my favorite LCS player right now. And I feel like Evil Genius is my favorite team to not, not like put my heart and soul into it. Like Evil Genius is till I die kind of thing. No, to just, you know, root for them. You know, just root for, the, root for them because they're really special and I like them. But, of course, um, Andrew have, like, one little, like, caveat, of course, to all of these things. While success in Spring Split is great, we are striving for worlds. MSI will be a new opportunity for JoJo and Danny. They will be playing against the best of the best and learning what they will need to do when we make worlds. So, yes, while Spring Split was the ultimate goal and winning it was incredible, the next part is, you know, worlds. Because if they fall off hard in MSI and then fall off in summer, all the people that are saying, all right, NA talent is great, will be just quieted down. And I don't want what they did in spring to diminish what they've done over the year. I just want them to do well in MSI and then succeed well in summer to go to Worlds. And if they do Worlds, I mean, think about it. I mean, their deal with the ship with Wolverhampton Wanderers to make a... To make a Gaming development in here in China would be phenomenal, and who knows? They could build up the next JoJo Pin or the next Danny, of course, developing there. And then those players from China will come into North America, and then they'll have to play Academy and all those kind of things. And then they'll come in and, of course, learn the system as well. So this could this victory in Spring Split could go a long way to not only North America, you know bringing in talent and believing them, but also succeeding with that talent. But in order for talent to succeed, you have to support these talents and to bring them out with veteran players and support. And I feel like Evil Genius's victory right now is going to be the start of something special. Will they succeed in MSI? I don't think so. I do not pass them to feed a G2, nor a T1, or an RNG in that matter, but do I believe they could be good enough to compete with the best in the world and then learn those skills so that they can have a chance at making it to the world? Absolutely. Absolutely. And if EG make worlds, that's kind of like an achievement themselves. And that could be a, a win for not only evil geniuses, but also for North America as well. Seeing two young, hungry North America products producing the very best they can be and... Pulling off incredible plays like these. It's incredible what sacrifice and risk taking can do to even sports itself. I mean, there are so many times that sports have to just like, you know, we want to win now. We want to um, win now at all costs. Let's just bring on the veteran players. And it kind of made me strange because I'm a Manchester United supporter. Uh, my team haven't won anything for the last several years. And it just feels like, you know, we bought in all these veteran players, the Cristiano Ronaldo's, the Sancho's in the world, and it kind of feels like it's not working anymore. We're crap right now, and I go and I wanted to admit that. So I'm just going to say that I just want something young and fresh, but I also want a team that can just you know, bring in the youngsters, the fresh, young face of the team with a bit of veterancy within the squad. Get rid of all the Deadwood. Get rid of, like, the Hoonies and the Golden Group. Those are the two players that were before JoJo Pian and JoJo Pian and Danny. And just, you know, just bring on something new. What's the risk? What's, what's the worst that could happen? I mean, 
will we finish bottom of the table? Yeah, but will we able to learn and to develop and show and, and and showcase that we could be good enough to compete with the very best? Absolutely. We're not gonna beat, you know, T1 just like my team cannot beat Manchester City or Liverpool or Chelsea or all kind of stuff. No, but we can learn. But we can just take a risk, develop with ourselves, learn from these players, and then they could be the most amazing personnel and players they can be. And I'm hoping and wishing all the best to Jojo Pin and Danny and Evil Geniuses on their journey to MSI in Busan. And I hope they can do well. Not saying to win MSI because, of course, oh my god, MSI is 35 ping. This will be the best opportunity for NA to win. No, 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 no. I'm not, I don't want that. I don't want that. I just, I just want them to do well. Okay, I just want them to do well. I think if they can make semifinals, that's good. If they make top four, that's really good. But I expected nothing less but trying the best. Just go out there, have fun, enjoy themselves, enjoy this moment because you'll never get a moment like this ever again. You may have so many moments, but you'll never have a moment like this in your lifetime. So enjoy all of this while you can. And um, keep your head above shoulders. Keep your head above the clouds. Not too much. And I wish them the best of luck. So anyway, that was a fun video to do. Um, really good vi really good discussion of I want discussion about evil geniuses and all those kind of stuff and succeeding and all those kind of stuff and what can they do to become successful and achievement with the talent and the youngsters and the veterans need to to pull it off. And that was kind of fun, you know, discuss it. So what do you think? Do you believe that Evil Geniuses victory at LCS is going to change the landscape of LCS and change the mindset of some of the owners in in terms of look un overlooking NA talent or will this like, you know, not change that much? And you know what? Just go with what they know of, important and all those kind of stuff. Let me know down in the comment section. So um next video we will be talking about MSI and the format and previewing MSI as we come up to May 10th, 2022, for the Mid-Season Invitation, which is going to take place at Busan in South Korea. Should be a lot of fun. But not for me. Of course, I have to wake up 3 a.m., but I'm not going to do that. Um, anyways, like, subscribe. Don't forget to be awesome and legendary. See you next time.